Okay, so we're at Private Social tonight uh, with Rocky Milano. Next month, Rocky, you're going to New Orleans, I understand, Correct. for a kind of a mixology Olympics. <laughs> Uh, well, Tales of the Cocktail is the largest convention that we throw uh, in the cocktail world every single year. If you can imagine 20,000 guys who do this, and girls who do this, uh, not only professionally, but out of a, a passion and a love for what they do, all getting together in New Orleans, five days, tech, uh, tastings, lectures, competitions, unveilings, it's an absolute blast. It's, uh, it really is kind of the high, one of the highlights of the cocktail year. Where do they fiddle those guys? Is it in the, in the, in the, in the Superdome? <laughs> Um, it's it's a little bit here, a little bit there. I think some people are out on the riverboats. Um, it, it really is just, it, it completely envelops the French Quarter. And it's one of those things for people who've been in New Orleans or love New Orleans, I always like to say, you haven't really done New Orleans until you've done Tales. Because uh, you have a city known for its parties, its drinking, its, its festivities. Uh, and then you have all these people who do this professionally. Uh, you have, you can walk through your hotel lobby and find people drinking absinthe, swigging it out of the bottle at four in the morning. Um, and this is going on for five days solid all over the city. So it's wild, it's fun, it's interesting, great people. Um, you know, the bar industry really does have some, some amazing personalities in there. And just, it's a chance for everyone to get together, see what each other's doing, and grow the industry together. So is it open to the public? Absolutely. Um, I'm booking my ticket right now. Uh, please do, please do. There's uh, some phenomenal events. That, uh, that are uh, free, there are some things that are paid for, the tasting rooms you get wristbands for, it's, um, it's just an absolute blast. If you want to actually attend the lectures and actually get some knowledge on some just random stuff, I attended classes such as, you know, History of the Jewel, Cocktails Below the Equator, um, What Would Aristotle Drink? Uh, was a phenomenal round table discussion on is there such a thing as the quintessential cocktail? What the essence of a cocktail is? Is there a cocktail found in nature? Kind of geeky, and you don't have to do anything like kind of that crazy, but it's still a lot of fun. Sounds great fun. So tonight, show us uh, what it's all about. Uh, make something for us, and if it's something that people can make at home, that will be even better. Excellent. Uh, what we're going to do, I'm a firm believer I pour the best uh, Amaretto Stone Sour out there. And what we're going to do is I'm going to show you and walk you through how I do it here at Private Social. So we have our tin here. We've got everything kind of set up. Now this one has ice in it, but I'm not actually going to pour directly into that because you don't pour into your ice until the very end. So I have my jigger. Very, very important to measure. Uh, as you dig back through classic books, one of the things they tell you time and time again, measure, 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 measure. Um, so many people just try winging it or they want a, a strong drink and you really destroy the culinary experience that you can't have in this cocktail by doing something like that. You intentionally unbalance the drink. Completely the wrong way to go for the guest experience. So we're going to start with a little bit of sugar. This is a three quarter ounce jigger. So we're going to hit up with a little bit of our simple syrup, which is a one to one ratio. This is freshly squeezed orange juice here at Private Social. We like to juice fresh every day. Now tell me that is not vibrant. Beautiful orange color. So we're going to do. So juice that will, orange juice that will be what? Florida oranges? Yes. Um, like I said, I did one and a half of that. Uh, and again, when you the, the difference between fresh and store bought, my God, once you've had it, you'll never go back. This is freshly squeezed lemon juice. We're just going to do this one time. Now I'm going to flip it over. This is now one and a half. And we're going to hit it with our Di Serrano. Do you like uh, mild lemons, like say Maya lemons or something like that, or just regular lemons? Meyer lemons would be fantastic. Um, I just do uh, regular lemons. Um, nothing uh, particularly crazy as I'm going to blend it with a, a lot of different things. So some of the subtleties can be sometimes lost if you go too expensive on any one ingredient uh, when you're doing a several ingredient drink. Um, Di Serrano, uh, Amaretto flavor liqueur from Italy. Uh, absolutely fantastic um, spirit. Something that uh, a lot of people I think tend to overlook. Great to dehydrate if you ever mess around with that because it's got a lot of sugar to it but still enough flavor that it maintains its flavor even once dehydrated. That's me just getting a little geeky there. Um, so what we're going to do, we're almost done. We're going to introduce our friend, the incredible edible egg. An egg. 
Yeah, now this, uh, as you, uh, I said at the onset, this is an amaretto stone sour. Well, sours traditionally incorporate egg, and if you look at a lot of sweet and sour mix or margarita mix or something like that, what they'll incorporate uh, is powdered egg. So the only difference between this and that is that it's gone through some nasty factory, whereas this, fresh from the egg. So kind of give it a little crack on the side, and just like you would filter out the yolk, back and forth. So you're just capturing the, the, the white? Just the egg white. Yolk is still intact. anything there. And discard. Now, as I said, I've already got this ready to go with ice. Anytime you incorporate egg white, very, very important. Shake, shake, shake. Um, if you don't, it'll come out in front, and you absolutely do not want that. Yeah. It seems the most important verb to mixologists is shake. Shake. Or, um, or stir. <laughs> and it's very important when to know uh, when you should be doing it. Now, one of the things, right now, I've more or less made. It smells incredible. Always taste, always smell. You gotta know the product you're producing before you send it to a guest. So, we have our mix here. Now, right now, all I've really done is made an amaretto stone sour that you can get at any bar. What's gonna make us a little bit more distinctive, what you can do at home, and what gives you so much opportunity to play with, is once we... fill a glass with ice, we're gonna hit it with some bitters. Um, now, this is a actual cocktail bitters. This is something we make here at Private Social. It is a strawberry lavender bitters. So this will be different from like Agostura bitters and stuff that Precisely. I use in uh, Chio Pisco Sours and stuff. Precisely. What we're doing here, this is a, a more of a flavoring bitters as opposed to an aromatic bitters. Um, this is just going to, all we've really done here is added some overproof uh, alcohol to some strawberry and some French lavender, uh, kind of muddled it up, let it sit for a while, cut up a little bit of vanilla syrup. Um, Again, plenty of great uh, bitters commercially produced right now, so you can absolutely get some cool flavors on the market. Where would you go to buy bitters if you were buying for a retail? Um, any major liquor store will have a good selection and or can order you some, with, uh, depending on what you find online. Um, Texas is a little bit of a, of a tricky market, um, but absolutely we still have some fantastic products here. Now, there was a little bit of a straw. Do you notice that foam layer up top? That's the egg white, that's the froth that we introduced to that drink, as well as some of that air. Um, that is absolutely looking great. Absolutely gonna add some, some um, great mouth feel to it. Notice it's starting to pop up top as the air starts escaping. This is gonna be flavorful, it's gonna be fruity, um, but the cool thing is this bitters that we've added, it's gonna take away just a little bit of the sweetness to give you the depth of flavor that you're after. It's not gonna be a sugar bomb, uh, it's not gonna be just alcohol smacking you upside the head, it's gonna be everything you want, especially on a hot day that we experience in Texas all the time. Uh, and since we're coming up on those 100 degree days, this is a fantastic alternative um, to beer or, uh, or uh, Zima, depending on if it's still 1995. Uh, please sit back, enjoy. Uh, I'm gonna grab a garnish uh, for this and uh, finish off the drink. Okay. So you're garnishing with a cherry? Uh, kind of doing a play on, on your flag garnish. Um, this is a orange slice and a Luxardo cherry. Um, Luxardo produces uh, Marsaka cherries from northern Italy. Um, it's going to be a little bit more tart. It's not sweet. You'll notice it's uh, not the neon red you find it uh, in ch the cherry jar from uh, a lot of chain places will offer. Um, it's got a lot more flavor to it, a lot more bite to it. Um, kind of an interesting texture. So even the garnish matters. Everything uh, that should go into a drink has some component to play. Uh, just like when cooking a, a dish, you want every part of that, everything on that dish to be integral right. to it and to be edible. Don't Rock, want to serve something that. Like. Rocky Milano at Private Social, thanks very much and best of luck in New Orleans next month. We'll definitely stay in touch.